so now the last part of the session which is basically the embedded methods so embedded method is basically something which goes a uh, little bit ahead of so one the wrapper method was basically where you kind of have features you drop each of them and uh, kind of in you know, each iteration you're kind of dropping out features which are worth performing that's all fine and good embedded methods are basically the methods which basically algorithm in a way the way it is kind of developed already has feature selection as part of it so it's basically a combination of wrapper as well as uh, filter methods so embedded methods uh, you're gonna kind of have a learning algorithm which already does some kind of feature selection in itself and also you're gonna kind of do that whole performance checking each feature at each level right so that's that's a kind of uh, method we are talking about here embedded methods so embedded method combine the qualities of filter and wrapper methods it's implemented by algorithms that have their own built-in feature selection methods uh, so some of the popular methods we have already familiar with lasso and ridge and we also know the difference between lasso and ridge so lasso is actually kind of a feature se selection actually it's a real feature selector right because it kind of reduces features down to zero right the ones that are not significant so that is an example of a classic classic embedded example right so features that are not important the algorithm itself takes care of it right uh, ridge is the other kind of thing which basically what it does is basically it reduces the magnitude of features which are not important uh, but not kind of reduce them down to all the way to zero right it kind of reduces all of the features uniformly and then obviously features are not which are not important important kind of gets compressed down to near around zero so that's the idea so there are other kind of algorithms also we are going to talk about them uh, random multinomial logic regularized trace some of them we are going to kind of be gonna get familiar in the next topic some of them you have to probably look up and search uh, so that that's the kind of technique that we're talking about right so the model the algorithm itself that you have that itself is a feature selector right so lasso is something that you're already familiar with rich again of sorts but lasso is a clear clear example of the thing that i'm talking about right embedded methods so we have already gone through some algorithms so we have talked about them uh, there are some of the other algorithms so you are kind of familiar with L1 regularized linear regression some of them you are going to learn in the next lectures upcoming lectures. in fact all of them are listed out here are something that is scheduled for the le next lectures so what is the difference between filter and wrapper methods right for feature selection the filter methods measure the relevance of features by the coalition variance whatever you talk about but basically some measure with dependent variable while wrapper methods measure the usefulness of a subset of features by actually training a model on it right so feature selection is that guy who says oh let's let's think he features filter methods right? filter methods are basically those that guy who kind of prepares a lot and who's like i think this is a strategy the strategy guy right in a in a company right and then there's the other guy who actually does things right who kind of says that hey i do not know what your strategy is let me just do things and then let me learn from it right so that's the basic difference between filter and wrapper filter is basically the strategy who says before doing anything it just says that hey i think this is not related so probably it's not relevant it's something that is not absolutely varying a lot so it's not relevant and all of those things right and the uh, filter guy just predicts everything in before doing anything right he's a, he's a thinker guy which is not wrong it's just that we know that the thinker guys can tend to be a bit uh, laggard and lazy in terms of doing things and they are not the most efficient people always right so that's why we have uh, rapper methods rapper methods are guys who say that hey i it's all fine you can predict what is going to work and what is not going to work but i'm not going to rely on that i'm just going to train my model because at the end of the day day what i'm concerned is not really seeing which feature is important or not my end goal is basically to see if my model is performing good or not right based on feature selection so let me just do that only right so let me just go and fit models and then let me drop features which are not performing and then see which is the best performing combination that i can get right so that's exactly the difference between filter and wrapper so obviously because you're just planning things out and you're not testing things on ground filter methods are much faster right because you don't have to do any kind of multiple times model fitting right you're just doing one variable at a time just do that uh, calculation of which variable is important and that's it wrapper methods obviously are computationally expensive uh, because they have to kind of do the model fitting thing multiple times over and filter methods use statistical methods for evaluation of subset of features while wrapper methods use cross validation right so filter methods which was used 
all the statistical tests to see which one is performing better rapper methods would go out and say hey i really don't care about all of this all i care is how well is my model performing on a validation set and that's what it would use right so so that's the concept of difference between filter and wrapper methods so filter methods might fail to find the best subset of features in many occasions right the major problem with any univariate analysis as such and this is what i was talking about right so univariate analysis in general and obviously filter methods are all univariate methods basically have this lag problem where if you're looking at each variable separately you are kind of have you might miss out on you know kind of looking at 15 irrelevant features and you say that each of them are irrelevant and you drop them but probably 15 of them together probably made some sense so that's why it's it's um, filter methods might not be the best idea to kind of find a subset of features right the group of features which uh wrapper methods can always provide you right and using a subset of features from wrapper methods make the model more prone to overfitting as compared to using subset so obviously if you are kind of looking at the validation set performance and kind of trying to derive the best features uh the problem with that obviously which you probably would have guessed by now is sort of overfitting you're kind of looking at validation set performance and doing it uh and then you what to kind of counter that what you tend to do is basically you kind of have two kind of validation sets right one is basically where you just use for feature selection right and then the other one is basically you tune your other hyper parameters on so that's that's a, that's the kind of thing you want to do for uh in case of in, in try to controlling of overfitting because definitely using wrapper methods if you're directly using validation set to kind of infer what variables to use you would obviously have a set of variable which gives you the best performance on validation set and that may not necessarily generalize very well in case of a test set so that's why in to kind of counter that you wouldn't want to probably have a separate validation set in this kind of cases we are using wrapper methods so so now let's kind of try and see uh, how all of this is implemented in, a, in an example of decision tree and logistic regression and these are probably things that you're probably not random for this is something definitely you're going to kind of uh, learn in later classes so what we are going to do is basically take importance of this particular feature so i've talked about how linear regression kind of ranks the features uh, that's basically using the weights right so in linear regression if you look at the weights you can infer which feature was important or not in case of random forest and decision tree there's something else called feature importances and that's what we are going to use to try and see which models how do we kind of do this whole uh, wrapper methods right so what we do is basically we first import all the methods all the uh, classification algorithms that we want to uh, classification algorithm that we want to kind of use and then we say select from model uh, which is basically we are kind of using wrapper methods and then in wrapper methods we basically pass the kind of classification so in this case first case we are using decision tree classifier and then what we use is what we say is that we do selection model which is basically instantiate the class the same thing we did for rfe right you first say what is the model that you're going to try and use and then based on that uh you say model dot transform x right so model dot transform would basically do the same thing it would implement the wrapper method at your end right so this is a feature importance that you kind of get from the So you had earlier 134 features and now after you do the wrapper based best model selection you kind of end up with 17 features so that's the idea behind uh, using decision trees so you can use now different kind of other models that you can probably uh, think of so what we are now doing is now that we use we use basically first decision trick to kind of infer which features are important and based on the important features that we have we use another model which is a forest uh, extra trees classifier which is nothing but some kind of a random forest and we use that to kind of fit and see the feature importances from that model right so uh, let me kind of go back and so let me kind of go back over and kind of explain again what we did here so we basically first imported everything that we wanted to uh, so there's a random forest classifier which is extra trees this logistic regression this decision tree what we do is first we basically select features how do we select features we say that use a decision tree to kind of uh, infer what are the important features 
and what the model did was it had 34 features it inferred that out of those 34 17 features are important now based on the 17 features it basically fitted a different model on the new set of 17 features and from those 17 features you can see the corresponding feature importance is out here right and once you do that you can basically get the corresponding standard deviation of the feature importance and how that standard deviation of the feature importance is right and how that is kind of varying so now if you sort them by uh, importances right so importances was your uh, the feature importances so you get the most important features and this is a feature ranking so the feature ranking you see that feature 14 was the most important feature followed by feature 1 followed by feature 25 and so on and so forth so this is the same thing that we so uh, we are kind of what we are trying to do here is basically uh try and kind of get under the hood of what rfe actually does right so rfe was basically exactly doing this and doing it in iterations this is the same thing that we have done here so we have now plotted the feature importances as well so this was the first feature most important feature of feature 14 then feature 1 then feature 25 and so on so we have just plotted the features in order of their importances and you can see that there's a clear what the importance of this graph is basically in this point understanding what is the amount of features that you want to select right so this is something that i told you i would be talking about earlier so the understanding is that number of features right whether to go from 1000 to 900 or 1000 to 500 or 1000 to 100 or 1000 to 10 is something that you have to decide by looking at something like this right you look at the feature importances in case it's a decision tree that you're fitting in case you are fitting something like a linear regression for it that's something you're familiar with in case you fit a linear regression you can basically see the weights of all the features right so how do you decide which is the point where you cut off the simple thing is understand this that where there is a suddenly a huge drop right so you can see that the feature importances are all very close to each other right so that probably means they're very important now you can have a cut here right right after say this feature number 32 i guess right 33 whatever basically the feature importance that you have here and then you can suddenly cut you, basically all the points there's a suddenly huge drop in the feature importances you can make a cut so that's the understanding basically of where you kind of say that this is the border of feature importances obviously if you have enough computational resources you would probably want to kind of keep as much features uh, but obviously if there are absolutely insignificant features you would want to drop them irrespective of if you have computational power or not if you have obviously computational power based constraints that you cannot have 1000 features you can only have 100 200 features then whether to go for 100 or 200 or 150 or 160 or 180 you kind of take a call based on this kind of a chart of sorts right where you see that the feature importance drops widely it drops very sharply at any point you say that that's it enough so that's it that's the session from my end on feature selection so in this session we talked about feature selection why it is important then we talked about univariate feature selection we talked about multivariate feature selection we did not actually talk about multivariate feature selection till much later in the lecture we talked actually we focused a lot on univariate feature selection in the beginning we talked about filter methods uh variance reduction correlation based and the statistical test to kind of measure correlation we talked about fallacies of all of those methods including correlation and linear correlation uh and then what we talked about was basically wrapper methods and kind of we talked about the exact idea and why that is more efficient than say a filter method but it's also computationally a lot more expensive and we talked about embedded methods where we see the algorithm in itself the way they are designed kind of takes care of uh the features important features right so that's about it log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates